So a conversation that GameSpot had with the Elder Scrolls Online game director, Matt Furor, actually exposes an issue for Nintendo Switch that I hadn't considered, and I've heard some people whisper about it, but I always thought it was overblown. And it's an issue that I don't really know what the simple solution is to it, uh, at least for creating a system that can play games, any type of game, anywhere, like Switch likes to tout. And that is because Matt Furrow made this statement on why Elder Scrolls Online will not be coming to Switch. He said, We have thought about Switch, but Elder Scrolls Online is an enormous game, and it just will not work. I would love for it to, because I love Switch. It is one of the largest games ever made, and it just will not fit on Switch. And he's not talking about in terms of like world size and, and, and visuals and graphics and capabilities. Like That's not really what he's talking about. He's actually talking about the file size of the game. Elder Scrolls Online is like 80 gigs, 90. Some people claim it's over 100. Uh, it's a game that's ever-growing, like any other MMORPG. It's not a game that ever shrinks. As more content's added, the game file size just keeps growing and growing and growing. Heck, I think my World of Warcraft file size at this point is like 150 gigs or something, and that game came out in 2004. The point is that the reason that he doesn't think it can come to Switch is because of the file size. And it's not so much because Nintendo doesn't have 64 gigabyte carts ready or anything like that. It's that that still wouldn't be enough. You'd still, even with a, a physical copy at 64 gigs, you'd still have to download like an additional 50, 60 gigs. And it's just going to keep growing from there. And it, it's an issue that. I think is almost wholly unique to Switch. Yes, obviously on PlayStation 4 and Xbox One, uh, there are games that have massive file sizes. In fact, Red Dead Redemption 2, which just came out today, so congratulations to everyone playing what appears to be probably the runaway game of the year. It <laughs> That requires like 100 gigs on PlayStation 4, like the base model. If you have an Xbox One X, the file size is even bigger because you're using 4K textures. Now, yes, these games brought to Switch running at lower resolutions would be smaller, but not so much so that uh, we're talking about massive shrinking of file size. We're not talking about taking like Red Dead Redemption 2 from, say, 100 gigs down to, you know, something more manageable at 20. We're talking like 100 gigs down to 90, maybe. And it, this is a, an issue that Switch has because when you get games that are this big, and it's not just because of physical versions, when you look at like the digital versions, it becomes an issue because not only does Switch only have 32 gigabytes of internal storage, the storage you need to store one of these games on your Switch is not exactly cheap. Even when you get it on sale, say you get a 128 gigabyte cart, right? You you get it on sale for, oh, I don't know, let's just say you only paid 15 bucks, 10 bucks, right? You got very, very lucky on a flash sale. Well, for that 10 to 15 bucks, you get to store one of these games, just one. And if you want to play most other games, you'd have to swap out that cart for something else. You want the 400 gig cart? Well, you probably spent at the best sale price I've seen it, let's assume that you got it at the sale price I put up a few weeks ago of $100, right? So you got that 400 gig cart, 100 bucks. Well, guess what? Elder Scrolls Online's taking up a quarter of that, and uh, that game's going to keep growing and keep growing and keep growing, and it might grow to the point where that 400 gig cart you have, a vast majority of it has to go to a single game, which is just not going to be acceptable in a marketplace where uh, you're trying to allow people to have as many games as possible. So yeah, while it's awesome that Nintendo Switch supports the micro SD card format, it's not necessarily a feasible format uh, for today's gaming space, for today's gaming landscape. Games are getting bigger and bigger and bigger, and you can hate that, but that's just the reality. It's been it's been an ongoing thing for, you know, decades. You know, games went from kilobytes to megabytes to gigs in a hurry, and it just keeps growing and growing and growing. Game file sizes aren't really shrinking, guys. They're getting bigger, and Switch is not really built to handle that. Now, it's not so much the internal storage because Nintendo's not going to add a crap load of internal storage because it would almost be more expensive than micro SD cards. But 
Nintendo, you know, the Switch does not support external hard drives. Why doesn't it support external hard drives? Well, because the Switch can't use that external hard drive when you're on the go. Now, I do think ex supporting external hard drives solves some of the some of the complaints here that um, you know Matt Furrer has from Bethesda, where. You know, Switch doesn't need, it's just not feasible. It doesn't really have the space. And if you allowed, you know, two, three, four, you know, 10 terabyte external hard drives, spinning disk hard drives that are cheap, uh, I think that solves a lot of the concerns with that in terms of playing the Switch at home. But a lot of these people don't want to be like, hey, you can buy this game for Switch, but you can really only play it at home. Uh, that's not the way people really want to sell their games. They want to be able to market it on Switches. Hey, you can take it off the dock and take it anywhere with you. You're not just locked to only play it in docked mode, uh, especially for a game as big as The Elder Scrolls Online or a game like you know Red Dead Redemption 2. And I think it's an interesting conundrum we find ourselves in because I don't know what the solution is. Uh, the, the, the storage medium doesn't really exist at an affordable price for a portable form uh, switch to really handle something like this. Even when you have like those 512 you know, you know, gigabyte phones, right? You have 512 gigabytes of storage. How much do those phones cost again? All right. Usually they're creeping up towards $1,000 or more, and a huge chunk of that increase is just off of the storage price. So if Nintendo was to be like, hey, let's just put 500 gigabytes of flash storage in the Switch, it might jump from $300 to $600 or $700. And that's just using the same specs. So it's not really something feasible for Nintendo Switch to offer an internal storage solution. And as, as awesome as micro SD cards are, a lot of people aren't going to want to buy like the Elder Scrolls Online and then have to buy, you know, a $100 plus, you know, micro SD card just so they can install that game but still be able to install other games. Obviously, some people are going to be willing to just buy a bunch of smaller 128 micro SD cards and just keep swapping them. Uh, but that's obviously not an ideal situation, and it's not something that I think uh, Bethesda really wants to see uh, mixed in. Now, obviously, there's, there's workarounds for this. They can make it so the game's physical only, which does limit the sales. Uh, but would also eat up some of the storage issues. You know, let's say let's say they, they opt for the biggest card size available at 32 gigs. It still would leave like 60 gigs to download. But uh, maybe you know they they put it on a cart and then maybe they include a 128 or whatever micro SD card in the box and then they charge you. I don't know what what would they charge for this game? Eighty dollars, a hundred dollars, or whatever to get it. I, I'm not exactly sure what a price point is where they would be willing to actually sell it physically on Switch. Uh, if they're including the micro SD card and they're including the largest size uh, Nintendo Switch card, and that is a possible solution, but again, none of this idea, none of the, the the issue with storage on the Switch does not actually, you know, properly solve all of the issues. Now, I know someone out there is going to be like, yeah, well, you know, it should just be on there for people who do have the 400 gig, you know, size, uh, or people who do who are willing. Like, obviously, having the game on the platform is better than not. But I do think you need to understand this from the publisher and developer side of things, where they look at it as, look, we have to invest money to get this game on Switch, knowing that it's going to have all of these limiting factors due to the storage, and we can't be sure that the marketplace is really going to be accepting of the fact that a vast majority of Switch owners will not be able to properly play this game. They won't be able to download the full update for the physical version, or they won't be able to fit the digital version on current storage mediums on Switch for a, a lot, a lot of Switch owners. Obviously, there's outliers, people who just, money's not really the object. They have the 400 gig. They're waiting for the 500 that's that's coming out, or is already, I think there's a 500 one already out, so maybe they're willing to spend, spend the money on the 500 one. And yeah, the Switch supports up to a potential of two terabytes, but those cards don't even exist right now and can you imagine what a two terabyte micro sd card is going to cost i mean you're talking five six seven hundred dollars for something like that so i i I'm, i sympathize a bit here with bethesda's stance and it makes more and more sense why a lot of these super large triple a games are just not feasible on Switch. The Xbox One and PlayStation 4 don't move. They're stationary consoles. They include, you know, 500 to a terabyte of storage. And even that, some users are complaining that this is a lot of a lot of storage for those systems. And they can fit them internally on their internal storage. And you can use cheap external storage in addition to those systems to expand, you know, to expand the storage 
ad infinitum. Heck, if you really want, you can open the consoles and install new hard drives and, and, and increase the storage that way. So I, uh, I'm i actually curious if you guys have a solution out there for this storage problem. Uh, maybe there's, there's a, a solution to this. I have not considered that solves this for everyone. And I think probably the one solution people are going to say is Nintendo should just release a standalone Switch that only works in docked mode. So it only works on your TV. It's not portable. And that solves everything. Or Nintendo should just make a traditional home console and then this becomes a non-factor. But ultimately, I think part of you know the Switch's success, part of Nintendo's success, is that they have this platform that does both and does it seamlessly. And yes, guys, I know there are some games that only work in portable mode and i think there's even a select couple games out there that only worked in docked mode but none of those games are major titles even stuff even stuff like pokemon let's go Pikachu, let's go eevee which is intended to be used with your tv can be played on the go super mario party while you can't play it like you know handheld wise you could still take it off the dock and play it in tabletop mode so it's it's limited but it's not entirely not portable right like you could still play the game portably in some form you don't have to be locked to your tv you just can't play in all of the, the proper forms on the go so while there have been games that have had these little restrictions we're talking about a game that's basically you could only play it at home period uh or you can take it on the go for a very small percentage of Switch owners that actually have the storage for these kind of games. And can you imagine if these games were coming out regularly? You know, if we got the Kingdom Hearts 3 and that ended up being 80 gigs. If you got, uh, you know, Red Dead Redemption 2 at 100. You got Elder Scrolls Online at 100 plus because it keeps growing. I, it, it's something that's hard to fathom the Switch can handle. And it, it does show one of the major limitations, not from a tech perspective in terms of specs and GPU and CUDA cores and all the things that people like to focus on, like why why can't Switch have Call of Duty Black Ops 4 because of this, that, and the other thing. Like It's still technically possible to get those games to run on Switch. But what does get in the way is storage. And yeah, what's your guys' solution to this, this clear issue? This isn't even about... Um, <laughs> This isn't even about the, the cost of carts at this point. Um, and Nintendo does intend to eventually release a 64 gigabyte cart, but that doesn't solve this problem either. And if, you know, people are, most most developers aren't even willing to use more than the 8 gig cart. So how are they going to convince a third party, hey, use our most expensive cartridge. And we're going to charge you, you know, an arm and a leg for it. We're going to charge you 10 15 20 dollars to even use those carts. I... Oh, man, it's an interesting conundrum, and it kind of sucks because I think a game like Elder Scrolls Online makes a lot of sense on Switch in terms of the game itself being a very interesting prospect for the platform. Obviously, Red Dead Redemption 2 is probably never coming to Switch, but it would have been interesting to see them attempt to bring it to Switch. Imagine being able to play Red Dead anywhere even if you can't play it at like that best looking visual settings you're seeing on all the other platforms it would be cool to still have that experience on the go would it not uh but unfortunately just storage wise alone it's just not really something that is wholly feasible and yeah i mean part of me wants to not accept the excuse because again you, you, there are ways, you know, that Nintendo could enable external storage to play under TV. But at the same time, I'm trying to look at the other side of the coin and be like, yeah, that's that really limits your audience. So, I don't know. Uh, you guys, let me know what you think about this down in the comments below. I am Nathaniel Rovajets from Nintendo Prime, and if you like this video, hey, hit that like button. In fact, you know what's awesome about when you hit that like button? It actually helps the video out. It actually makes the video, believe it or not, I I, I found this out quite recently from uh, my MCN uh, that when people like the video, it actually sends out more notifications to more of the people actually subscribed to my channel. Why it takes people liking your video to send out notifications to more people on your channel is beyond me, but that is something that's happening currently in the YouTube algorithm. So hey, if you do like this video and you like you know my channel, I highly suggest you hit that like button. If you dislike it, 
you know, hit the dislike button, I guess. Um, I, I do warn that the more you interact with the channel, if you don't like my videos, the more my videos are going to show up in your feed. So hitting the dislike button doesn't mean the video is not going to show up in your feed. You're not telling YouTube you don't want to see these videos, unfortunately. What you're telling YouTube is, this was a video that I watched enough of that I felt like I should interact with. And because you interacted with it, that's what YouTube values. So they want you to interact again with more of these kind of videos. So for those of you that criticize and don't like my content, um, the easiest way to stop seeing my content show up in your feed is stop watching, stop clicking, stop commenting, and stop hitting the dislike button because it doesn't actually help you out. Um, anyways, subscribe for more content. I, I do have a giveaway. It, there's a gleam.io link down in the description, and I'll catch you guys later.